What's in store for you through the rest of today, coming up. Hi. He mentioned at the end. Yeah, I know. That's why I asked him what we were talking about. I just sent you what the email sent. Hey, how are we on time? Okay, we can go straight to Adam if we need to. Always tracking, always alerting. Here's your Storm Track 15 weather. Welcome back to News 15 at noon. We got to get you caught up with the latest on this system. Tornado warnings are coming out hot and fast with this line. For us, we don't have any currently, but this is something that we need to monitor here going through the next few hours. A tornado watch in place until 7 p.m. today. It covers all of Acadiana. You can see that yellow shading indicating that tornado watch here. Now, what is a watch versus a warning? We talk about this all the time. A watch, which is in yellow, means conditions are favorable for development of tornadoes. It does not mean that there's one on the ground. You just need to pay close attention. A warning means severe weather is already happening or imminent, that a tornado has been spotted or is about to form up, and you need to get to your safe room, whether that be under a stairwell, in a central room with no outside walls or windows. Right now, we have a watch. We're watching the system to see whether or not it's going to produce a tornado. So far, it is definitely achieving that. I mean, you can see the red boxes here just popping up left, right, all over the place with this line. We don't have any showers and storms in our area, which is not what the models predicted. They thought we were going to see a lot of showers developing that could help suck that energy out of the atmosphere. That has not transpired. A very strong line of storms. There are 10 active tornado warnings stretching from northern Louisiana down to Calcasieu Parish. And you can see we got one there that stretches into Beauregard Parish, another one in Beauregard Parish. And I have a feeling that this line is going to keep going until it can't anymore. So that puts it right in place for us to see some severe weather too. Futurecast shows that by 1 o'clock the line is approaching Jeff Davis Parish. We go forward to around 2, 3 o'clock and notice that line starts to strengthen as it gets into our area. That's a different scenario than what we had last time. The line was weakening as it got here. By the time it gets into Lafayette, the big change on Futurecast is now the line is slower. We were thinking 2, 3 o'clock for the line to get to Lafayette. It's now looking like 3 or 4 o'clock where we see that line pass through with some very strong storms, the possibility of damaging winds and tornadoes along this line. It does not clear the area now until 6 p.m. or even later than that, so we're going to have a long time tracking this system through the evening hours. Outside right now, you can see we have a lot of clouds streaming across the sky. That's that moisture feed into the system. Bouncing our camera are those very strong winds, 76 degrees right now in Lafayette. Going forward, picking up showers and storms here through the afternoon and evening hours. 
those winds across the area. In Lafayette, not terrible. 15 miles per hour, a gust to 29. But look at New Iberia, sustained at 23, gusting to 41. Lake Charles, just ahead of the line, sustained at 30, gusting to 52 miles an hour. That's not with the storms. That's out ahead of it. That itself can knock out power. We're looking at a high wind warning from now until 5 p.m. for wind gust up to 55, maybe even 60 miles an hour before those storms arrive. So you can see our future wind gust here showing the increasing winds across the area through 3 o'clock. Here comes the line clearing us. You saw that brief time where we're at 60 mile per hour wind gust. This is certainly going to be something that causes at least some issues as it moves on through. Drier for your Thursday and Friday. Storms return for your Saturday. We're going to keep you up to date on the latest on those storms. But in the meantime, we'll be back after this break. Hey, we're going to get Leon over here right now. Wait, say that again. Phone horizontal. Sure. Perfect. That, and we're okay. seeing some of the ring light. So let's. There we go. Okay. That's good. Yep, that is perfect. Okay. And Jackie, I think I have you guys for two minutes and 30 seconds for this interview, okay? okay. All right, great. What time are we starting? In one minute. Lay on one minute. Oh, I'm sorry. This okay. is Facebook. This is FaceTime. Okay, so we can see you're in a good spot. You can come a little closer. Perfect. Hi, Leon. You can't see me, but I am Taylor. Nice to meet you. What's up, Taylor? So I was just telling Jackie we have two minutes and 30 seconds for this interview. Um, okay. And you can't see me, so if I say really quick before we go, that's kind of your cue to wrap it up so I can toss it to break, okay? Okay. And I Where's my eye line, too? What was that? My eye line is... That's good. Uh, right there. 15 okay. seconds. Eight. Here we go. Welcome back. Joining us virtually this afternoon, we have Leon. Leon, thank you so much for being here with us virtually today. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. I am excited to have you. So go ahead and tell us about the Black Angels over Tuskegee. What are you guys doing? Black Angels over Tuskegee is the story of the Tuskegee Airmen, the first black aviators of World War II. And we are right here in Lafayette, Louisiana, at the Hyman Senate, ready to rock out the show tomorrow night. I love this. And I can see you have the, some of the set behind you. What can people yes. expect for this? Yes, we're excited. Yeah, absolutely. So the show date is tomorrow, you said, correct? Are tickets still available? Yes, yes tickets still available online, Ticketmaster.com. You can get your tickets to come out. We're at the Hyman Center right here in Lafayette. 7.30 start time, so make sure you come early. You can also get your tickets at the box office as well. So come out. It's a great show. You can bring the family, bring some tissue because it is a tearjerker. Oh, gosh. I'm glad you mentioned that so people can pack the <laughs> tissues with them. And, and Leon, if people have never heard of this show or seen this show, what is something that they can expect if they decide to come out and see it tomorrow night? You can expect an incredible story about American heroes. You know, this is not just African-American history. It's American history. Mm -hmm. And it's not in history books, and it should be, about how incredible these World War II aviators were. A lot of records are still standing to this very day. So if you love history, if you love educational things, even if you just love theater, make sure you get yourself right down here to the Hyman Center tomorrow night, 7.30 p.m. 
And I love that you mentioned that this is not only African American history, but American history. And I think this is amazing that you guys are bringing something like this to the stage. What is your favorite part of this show? Oh my God, every part is my favorite part. I wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 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 I love the part with one of the characters where he says, uh, the, antidote, the antidote to racism is excellence. Because that's what the Tuskegee Airmen did back in the 1940s. They excelled, and a lot of their records are still standing to this very day. And I think, you know, people will also be educated, but they'll be entertained. We have mm -hmm. this word called edutainment. <laughs> so make sure you come out and, and, and just enjoy it. It's a, it's a great journey. Absolutely. Leon, thank you guys for bringing this history to the stage here in Lafayette. And break a leg for tomorrow. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Appreciate that. Of course. And if you at home want to get your hands on some tickets, we're going to post all this information on our website, klaf.com. Stay with us, though. We'll be right back after this break. Warnings. And what a storm system this is. We have nine tornado warnings currently stretching from the I-20 corridor in northern Louisiana all the way down to Calcasieu Parish. This system, it's getting its act together real fast, and we're going to be watching for this to enter into our area. It's only about an hour away from Allen and Jeff Davis parishes, so that tornado threat rapidly increasing here as we are going into the afternoon hours. We're going to be talking more details on that, tracking these storms for you throughout the day here on News 15. All right, Adam, thank you. We're going to be checking back in with him in our next half hour, so don't go anywhere. More severe weather updates for you after this.
You're watching News 15 at noon. Welcome back to News 15 at noon. I am Taylor Troche. Thank you for joining us. Well, you know, today is a News 15 severe weather day. We're hearing all the beeps going off in the weather center. And Adam, there's a lot of tornado watches being issued uh, right now. So what's the latest? Well, we have a, a whole bunch of things going on, Taylor, and it's starting to ramp up a lot quicker now that we're starting to get that daytime heating in place. For us, the most important thing is right now we have a tornado watch. This is not a warning for the area. A watch means that conditions are favorable and that through the afternoon hours, it's potentially a situation where we'll be tracking some tornadoes in the area. Now that's not guaranteed, but that is something that we're going to have to monitor here going forward. That's in effect until 7 p.m. Now we have a ton of things going on just off to our west. Look at the tornado warnings ongoing with this line. There are currently nine tornado warnings in place. This bottom section of the line, though, has yet to produce any, so that's, I guess, some good news. We're going to watch that as that works its way towards Acadiana, but there are those warnings stretching up from the I-20 corridor down the line just to the west of Alexandria. Our current winds across the area, not terrible yet in most spots, but we have a gust of 41 in New Iberia. Lake Charles sitting in the lower 50s there uh, with those wind uh, gusts right now. So we are going to be monitoring that here through the rest of your day. Strong winds no matter what. Through the rest of today, those thunderstorm chances are increasing. That tornado threat too. Apparently we just got another one going off, Taylor. None of these affecting our area quite yet, but within the next hour, it's likely we start seeing some of those here, at least towards Jeff Davis and Allen Parishes. So we'll keep you up to date on that. In the meantime, though, just get ready. It's going to be a long afternoon. All right, Adam. Yes, it will be. We'll check back in later on for the latest. And a person's inquiry about another person's vaccine status could possibly land them in jail here in Louisiana. That's thanks to Republican Larry Begley's proposal of House Bill 54. The new measure would prohibit stopping someone from entering a business, government office, or home base on their vaccine status. While some members of the committee say they agree with Bagley's concept, they have concerns about it in interfering with private business owners. There's no need for any of that. Um, I don't. I, I mean, it doesn't really matter if it, if they own the property, then they should be able to for their own safety and just their knowledge. If it makes them feel better about it. Now, if passed, the bill would cover all vaccines, not just the COVID-19 shots. And the Louisiana State Fire Marshal issuing a warning about the dangers of open burning following multiple deaths as a result of burn piles getting out of control. State Fire Marshal Butch Browning says that just because there is no official burn ban in certain areas, that does not mean that conditions can't change quickly before you can react. Further revealing that four deaths have been attributed to open burning accidents since the end of January. Browning cautiously reminding everyone that conducting open burning is very dangerous and smoke from the fire can and will overtake that person if he or she is not careful. And deadlines to register to vote in the April 30th municipal general election is fast approaching. The in-person or by mail registration deadline, it's today. And the deadline for registering through the Go Vote online registration system, that is Saturday, April 9th. Now these deadlines are for citizens who have never registered to vote, as well as voters who would like to make changes to their registration. Citizens may check their registration or register to vote online at GoVote.com. And the Scott Fire Department is implementing new computer software so important training can be conducted online. In addition to our, their weekly drills, officials are able to develop online classes that firefighters can take at their own pace, making it much easier to fit into their busy schedule. After listening to lectures, firefighters will review a PowerPoint and take a test, allowing them to be better trained and allow uh, them to spend more time with their family. And you know, the winners for the plain air painting competition have been announced. Judge Mark Boges presented the awards for this year's winners. Best of show, Mark Anderson of Wauwatosa, Wisconsin for Romulus and Ramus. Second place, Jeanette Heron of Niceville, Florida for Best Breakfast in Town. And third place, Mary Monk of Abelia Springs, Louisiana for That's My Cows. Now funds raised from this event provide funding for art education.
and Healthy Kids Running Series is making a return this year at Moncus Park. The organization's goal is to get kids back active and living a healthy lifestyle. Now, the series is going to really teach children how to be active and healthy while creating meaningful relationships in our community. News 15's Patsy Douglas has the story. That is stretch. <laughs> That's just put him up. Participants stretching and warming up for this year's five week running experience. Very exciting, Very exciting and, and you, you, it makes you feel proud of yourself. So. Excitement grows as kids get the opportunity to race to the finish line. Do it for five Saturdays. We keep score of who finishes first. Um, we, we, you know, we encourage them to beat their times from last week because we timed the, the, the half mile, excuse me, the quarter mile, half mile, and mile run. So we time those. And so we keep track of that. And so we, uh, at the end, after our fifth race, we basically give trophies um, and medals. Everybody gets a medal. Um, but we give trophies out to acknowledge those kids that have really pushed hard and, and finished first. Organizers hope that this event will continue to get families out and moving around Acadiana. That gives them some, you know, motivation to improve, and it also gives them some self-esteem. Look at me, I can do this. And so that's a big part of the program. Getting these kids out here and knowing that they can do, if they really work hard, they can make improvements, they can do anything they really put their heart into. Now registration starts at $40 for this five-week series. And it's open now at HealthyKidsRunningSeries.org. And that was News 15's Patsy Douglas reporting. All right, coming up, we have the latest on some astronauts that returned from space. Details coming up this half hour. And a potent line of storms with a lot of tornado warnings on them headed our way. We'll give you the latest details on that just ahead. But up next, we have some more brush fire safety tips. We are chatting with uh, state fire marshals after the break. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you fine. That, everything sounds good. Okay. The shot looks good. Um, any last minute questions for me? No. All right, we, are, we should be good to go. And I will let you know when we have 30 seconds or less in the interview, usually my words of choice are really quick before we go. Okay. And I think we have three minutes for this segment. Let me double check. Hey, Drake. Three minutes. We are good. All right. Are you, you're in Baton Rouge? No, I am. You can say I'm in Baton Rouge, but I am uh, back to where I live in Mandeville at this point. Oh gosh. And it's, is it really windy over there by you guys too? Uh, yes. <laughs> cannot handle. My hair is blowing everywhere, but I'm outside <laughs> because I need to be outside. So. It's okay. We have those graphics too, so I'm sure um, our graphics guy can pop them up whenever oh. your hair gets crazy. <laughs> I don't care how it looks. It actually helps, you know, make the point. <laughs> <laughs> what was that, Drake? I think he said 30 seconds. Okay. So just hang tight. No, he won't go in unless I go up there. I can hear the winds are like. Oh, that's comforting, Adam. Thank you. I've got it down to science. Hey, 30 seconds. Just got the 30 Q. There we go. He's like, no. 15 seconds. Welcome back. Joining us virtually this afternoon, we have Ashley with the State Fire Marshal's Office. Ashley, thank you so much for being here virtually with us today. Thank you for having us and helping us share this message. 
Of course, you guys recently just put out a press release about um, these brush fires and some safety tips. So I know you've had uh, reports of a lot of deaths from things like this. So what should people at home kind of be aware of and know? Sure. Let me first say that these deaths, they're unprecedented. I've talked to several people on our agency and they can't remember a time where there has been someone who's lost their life due to an out of control brush fire essentially so we really need to make sure everyone understands that just because there's not a burn man it does not mean that the practice of open burning and having burn piles in your property is not dangerous it is very dangerous and just as you can see uh the, the conditions of a day can change uh, automatically i mean you could have no wind at two and then 10 minutes later wind that's blowing in all directions and you can't quite get a grasp of where it's coming from so the tips that we suggest start with knowing what the weather conditions are mm -hmm. of the day that you're trying to do this. And we don't just mean the hour, we mean the entire day because oftentimes these burn piles, they go all day. Secondly, of course, make sure that there is, uh, you know, no burn ban in your area and that it is legal to do that. Uh, once that is all cleared out and you're on a good day and as everything is, you know, not dry and the wind is good, when you're gonna set up your location, make sure it's 75 feet away from any other property, yours or a neighbor's. And then when you have that location, make sure you put a five foot wet line around that burn pile. That will help in the event that wind does kick up and it takes any flames or embers and moves them outside of that pile. That you've got a good space to try to capture that that's wet and it's not dry and it won't easily catch and then of course take off like many of these are doing. Um, we also suggest making sure someone knows that you're doing this, a loved one, a neighbor, just to make sure if something does go wrong and they happen to not be able to see you wherever they're at if it's a yeah. neighbor, then they know that there might be a problem. Also, we want to make sure that um, everyone just does more of a natural type of burn. Don't use flammable um, objects or um, ignitable fluids to, to make this fire start because that can sort of make that fire larger and, and make it harder for that wet line to be to be efficient. Uh, we also want to make sure, especially, you always stay with the fire outside. Don't start it and go to the grocery. Don't start it and go inside and take a nap. You need to keep your eye on it in the event that it does get out of hand. If it does get out of hand and you're right there with a water source, you can put it out quickly. If it does get out of hand past the time that you're able to really get to it quickly, don't try. Just call 911 get out of the way, get to a safe place, because there were at least two instances of the four we were talking about in that press release that it, it appears that the individual went out of their way to try to stop that spread from going to the neighboring property and, of course, uh, lost their life in the process. And we want to make sure people understand it's not the flames that's the problem. It's the smoke. The mm -hmm. smoke will take away your oxygen and will make you pass out, and then you can't do anything about the fire. And unfortunately, in these instances, the fire ended up reaching the individual, and they didn't have a chance. So we want to just make sure, again, open burning is very popular in rural places, especially where you guys are reporting from today. Yeah. We know it's springtime. We know it's popular. We need everyone to understand that it is still dangerous and that they have to take these precautions every single time in order to keep yourselves, your neighbors, your property, and your neighbor's property safe. Well, Ashley, these are all wonderful tips. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing this with our viewers today. You're absolutely welcome, and we thank you, and we ask everyone to spread the word they know someone maybe missed this broadcast share it with anyone else they know does open burning make sure they know these tips and just let them know that there is danger out there absolutely and ashley thank you so much if you at home want to rewatch this share this this is going to be on our website klaf.com let's go ahead and check in with adam olivier right now Yes, thank y'all so much. Have a good day. Stay safe. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. Hey. He can toss to break too. Oh yeah, we have that. What is that set for? 145? 130. You can drop it down to like 115. Uh huh. Why don't you ain't taking time away from my boy? So we're going straight to Adam. Okay. Oh yeah. No, oh, not by himself. No.
Welcome back to News 15 at noon. We are tracking severe weather possibilities moving their way into Acadiana. And I'll tell you what, this line, it does mean business back to our west. We are currently under a tornado watch right now until 7 p.m. today. This includes all of Acadiana here. And what we're going to be watching for is the potential for some of these storms to produce tornadoes. Now a watch versus a warning. I want to make this clear to you. Right now we are under a watch. A watch means conditions are favorable for tornadoes to develop. It does not mean there are any on the ground. It does not mean we have any warnings or that you need to take shelter. But what you need to do is stay weather aware and prepared in case we do have warnings issued. These are the more serious ones. If you have a warning issued for your area, that means a tornado has either been sighted or is expected to form and you need to take shelter immediately in an interior room away from windows and outside walls. Bathrooms typically are that or under a stairwell. So that's where we stand right now. Back out to our west. It has been a very active time out there. Tornado warnings popping up, going down, popping back up. This is what we call a QLCS, a quasi linear convective system, meaning a big line of storms. And what happens is along this line, the leading edge of it, we get these little spin up tornadoes. They're very difficult to find. They don't last long, but they can do a lot of damage because this line is trucking it across the area. It's about an hour away or even less than that from getting into Jeff Davis Parish. The tornado warnings have now been confined up to the northern parts of Louisiana, but this part has shown signs that it's trying to get its act together and start spinning some things up too. So we need to pay close attention to that because our future cast models are suggesting it's going to come into Acadiana by two, three o'clock and it's going to do uh, some pretty big things. It's going to start building up these storms. Now, this is a new model run here, and it continues to slow the progress of this line of storms. We were thinking two o'clock getting into Lafayette. It now doesn't even have the line entering into Jennings until 3 p.m. Four, five o'clock is when we're expecting that line to make it into Lafayette. And then by 6 p.m., Hopefully it's getting to Morgan City, but this is actually holding it off until seven o'clock. So this could be a prolonged event here than what we were originally anticipating. We have a lot of wind streaming that moisture in lots of clouds out there in downtown Lafayette. You'll see the camera bounce from time to time as we've gotten some really good gust here at the station. 76 degrees right now. Temperatures will climb into the upper 70s with thunderstorm chances throughout the afternoon. Right now, Lafayette hasn't updated the wind gust yet, but I expect these to get higher here because look at Lake Charles, 52 miles per hour with that wind gust. That's what we're expecting here through the afternoon. A high wind warning. We don't get these typically, but high wind warnings. They're issued when we have those very strong winds out ahead of the main line of storms. Gust to 55, maybe even 60 miles an hour possible through 5 p.m. Here are those future wind gusts for the area. You can see that by one o'clock widespread 50 mile per hour wind gust across Acadiana jumping up ahead of the storms by three o'clock into the upper 50s to near 60 and then that line finally clearing through the area by the time we get to six seven o'clock this evening. So today pay close attention to the forecast storms are rolling in right now likely we're going to have some warnings here tomorrow and Friday things dry out but our next storm chance comes on Saturday morning that does not appear to have a severe threat with it it's really today that we're going to be closely monitoring these storms here in Acadiana so I think we're going to be doing a little thing with Taylor here where we're talking about uh pet and safety tips right uh Okay, so I, are we bringing up boxes or? Yeah, we can go to boxes. Okay, sorry. so as most people know, with these severe weather, we also have to think about our pets. We mm -hmm. have ghosts joining us today, but yes. we do have some tips from the National Weather Service. Mm -hmm. um, I made some bullet points for those. So when people need to keep pets in mind, especially with severe weather. I know uh, we say this all time and time again, whenever we have severe weather in the area to bring your pets indoors. Now is not the best time to keep them outside. And you can also confine your pets to one room of the home. And if you have to evacuate, watch your animals, bring them with you and keep them close with you. And then the ASPCA also has some tips 
on their website as well. During these severe storms, um, it might be best to take shelter in a basement. Make sure that the pets are comfortable with that room uh, before you bring them there. And of course, they do have lots of calming medications for dogs and pets out there. Um, you can also give them some treats if they're maybe nervous with thunder. They have great things called a thunder shirt. But the best thing I know for Ghost right here, he loves comforting toys. He loves cuddles on the couch. So anything to kind of keep uh, them calm during the severe weather is is great too. So we'll have some more tips um, posted on our website, klaf.com for that as well. And Adam's gonna have more weather updates as he gets them. But after this, we have uh, the updates on some astronauts that made their way back to Earth. Details coming up. Hey. Yeah. Welcome back. So two astronauts finally touched down in Kazakhstan after nearly a year on the International Space Station. NBC's Sam Brock has the latest on this story. Despite obvious geopolitical tensions around the world and certainly between the United States and Russia, there is one tie positively that seems to be binding these two countries regardless. And that is space. And history was made overnight with NASA's Mark Van de Heij touching down after 355 consecutive days in space. That's a record for any American. And he came down with two Russian cosmonauts on a Russian Soyuz capsule in a remote part of Kazakhstan. We spoke with retired space commander Scott Kelly, who said, despite what is going on on the ground, that these astronauts and cosmonauts have an emotional connection and friendship and certainly survival upon one another that transcends what's going on on the ground. So that history was made. It is also notable that an agreement right now between the International Space Station and five different space agencies remains intact through 2024, but Russia so far has not committed to maintaining that relationship beyond 2024. One other thing of note, earlier this month, three Russian cosmonauts made headlines when they showed up at the International Space Station with yellow and blue on their spacesuits. Yellow and blue, of course, the colors of the Ukrainian flag. The Russian Space Agency says there's no connection to Ukraine. Sam Brock, NBC News.
And one final look at that forecast here as we go forward in time. We're closely monitoring these storms that are building up back to our west. Tornado warnings along them. We'll be tracking those throughout the afternoon here on News 15. And of course, if we have any tornado warnings, we'll bring those to you as they come out. Absolutely, Adam. Thank you. Stay weather aware today. Download our app. Get all those push alerts right in the palm of your hand. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you right back here tomorrow.